Hello. Hello. Hi, uh, my name is David. I graduated KDS School in 2023, and my major was Master of Public Policy. My name is Yongjae Kim, Associate Professor at KDI School of Public Policy and Management, and Affiliate Scientist at RFFCMCCEIA based in Milan in Italy. And I'm working on the area of uh, environment economics and policy, and also energy economics and policy, and climate change economics and policy. Uh, when I first came to KDI School, I was hoping to study something about environment policy. I was concerned about climate change. At that time, there was really no professors that specialized in that. And then I found out that there would be one specific person who specialized in environment policy coming in. Uh, that's Professor Kim right here. So I sent him an email before he arrived at KDI School. I'm interested in climate change because I'm afraid that I'll be killed by climate change uh, before I die of old age. Uh, at that point in time, he just stated, you know, please send me a me, let's talk after I arrive at school. And uh, I guess that was, at least for me, the start of how I got to know Professor Kim. Uh, I didn't I remember the moment that you reached out to me the other day. I thought like uh, you, I, we first met in the, during the class time, like uh, technical change and the environment, whatever you call it at the time. No, I didn't remember actually. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of good memories at KDI School that stands out to me uh, in terms of just everyday life. I got to meet with people from all over the world, uh, Latin America, Africa, you know, other parts of Asia, etc. So that was a very, very meaningful experience. Um, just simply being able to talk to them, learning more about their culture, their background, etc., how perceptions, worldviews change is all pretty interesting. But working on research project, Professor Kim was probably one of the most memorable experiences. After about two years uh, after starting, we finally got one paper published. This would not have been possible if by chance uh, I wasn't able to meet Professor Kim right here because he guided me through a lot of the uh, writing process, the research process, uh, which was quite invaluable for me. Maybe I can add some of it. Like uh, the moment that I first met with uh, David was the moment that I was also looking for a research topic that I want to pursue after I spent a fair amount of time in abroad, like uh, 12 or 13 years. So like uh, I was a, uh, trying to investigate some of the like, you know, climate change issues or, you know, electricity, et cetera, and any other areas that uh, nobody ever looked into before. And we come to a conclusion that a transportation area, particularly like uh, electric vehicle charging infrastructure is the area that have ne no one ever looked into before. So that's this, uh, the moment that uh, we started to uh, the collaborate with each other. First of all, like, uh, okay, I need to be uh, honest with you guys, right? Uh, first of all, he's very a, a risk averse person, which is, uh, it's not common to everybody, right? So he's always well planned and well uh, prepared everything like in advance. So he's, that's the good point that I was uh, intrigued by. So like he always like uh, prepare everything before we meet with in regular meetings on a weekly basis. So like uh, I really uh, put a high value on that. It's my first time working with a research professor. Uh, the entire experience was very new to me. I am from Canada, which means I am a native English speaker. But writing academically was a completely different topic, which of course the school offers classes like academic writing, uh, things that would help me write papers. But it was the guidance provided by Dr. Kim uh, over here that really allowed me to explore um, how research was conducted, how writing was conducted. There were a lot of times where, not necessarily fight, I never fought with Dr. Kim, but there were points of disagreements when it came to writing. It was learning experiences, it was learning experiences. So um, academic writing specifically in this field can be, in my opinion, very rigid. And it took me a while, I still have challenges, but it took me a while to get past that, to find a nice point where Dr. Kim and I would be completely okay with a certain kind of, I guess, writing style that we would move forward with. Achieving that took a lot of, I guess, meetings with him, um, going back and forth, discussing ideas, etc. The thing that I am most grateful for is that he's very receptive to my questions, uh, my concerns, my comments. You know, if I'm wrong, I want to know that I'm wrong. And he's okay telling me that as well. But not only that, he also goes a step further and explains to me why this might be wrong, why a different approach might be better, um, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, I would say that my experience uh, working together with Dr. Kim uh, was an extremely positive one. Uh, on top of that, he is a marvelous writing writer, but like, uh 
Yeah, in terms of the academic writing, it's totally different things. So like, it's, which it takes for him to get used to it. But still, I mean, there are some barriers to get over it. But like, you know, still, uh, he has more time to get used to it while like he's going to study in the United States. The reason why I chose KDI school is because I spent a few years within the Korean government, uh, specifically within a branch of the Ministry of Education. Um, it's through that experience that I understood how important policy was. But after I finished my time in the government, I was wondering what can I do to move forward? How can I pick a field that I would be interested in, which is, as I mentioned before, uh, environment policy. And that's the reason I picked KDI school because it is uh, one of Korea's best policy schools. I would say that the vast majority of my value from this program was meeting with international students and meeting with Dr. Kim over here. It's very clear for me to say that without meeting Dr. Kim, I'm not sure if I'd be able to progress the way that I did in terms of academic research um, and academic performance and what I would end up doing, which is a PhD in the United States. So I heard that you accepted to, into UC Davis, right? Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. I received a lot of guidance from Dr. Kim on how to apply, for example, writing my SOP, the statement of purpose, uh, personal statement, etc. Um, I think I sent him like 20 emails, 30 emails of my revisions, and uh, while I did feel sorry for bothering with that so much, it would be a very important step. Most part of the application process is actually quite easy. Just simply pay the fee, get your paperwork like transcripts, diplomas, etc. Uh, submitted online. The most important part was writing the essays because you only had one chance to get it right, uh, make the best impression that you can. And that's uh, where Dr. Kim has helped me a lot in the application process. The other thing that Professor Kim encouraged me to do was as a part of being his research assistant, excuse me, um, we went out to conferences every now then maybe once or twice a year. And then from there, he actually pushed me to network with some of the people there who ended up being invaluable resources and is probably one of the key reasons why I was able to be accepted into UC Davis. Talking with these people gave me an idea of what they're looking for, what I should uh, be aiming for in my essays, etc, etc. But yeah, I applied and through not only the essay and the application, but through all of the research activities, projects that I've done, at that point in time, paper and progress that we did, I want to say that that's the reason why I was accepted into UC Davis. Of course, no one's going to know the actual reason why because they don't disclose that, but I would say that's my specific strength applying. Not, not particular, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Professor Chung Gun Yoon said life is short <laughs> and the PhD is long. He made me. No. <laughs> what ended up happening was that uh, with the research, I, I never intended on doing this. I actually never intended on doing PhD at all. And I told Professor Kim this repeatedly as well. But yeah. It seems as though I wasn't too bad at it. It's still okay continuing working with me. I enjoyed researching, learning something new, discovering new things. I normally sit behind a computer anyways, but at least this way I'd be doing something productive. As Professor Kim mentioned, electric vehicle research, especially in Korea, is not really well explored. So it was a very, very good opportunity to start here. Climate change environment policy is a very, very big area and not one person can handle this entire thing so i decided why not make this my next step in my life career and the focus on the transportation sector specifically um, that's the reason why that i did end up applying for the phd program admittedly through significant amount of encouragement from professor kim because as i mentioned i never intended on doing this initially do i regret this decision now i'm actually quite glad okay uh, adding to that on top of that i just want to highlight the importance of the research niche niche or I would say like a, a literature gap in terms of the, uh, the area that you want to pursue further in your uh, next career a steps. Like uh, there are tons of tons of a areas that you can do, but uh, finding the areas that no one else has pursued it yet would be a good a, a topic that you want to pursue in your PhD life. During a career um, in sustainability, uh, okay, first of all, if you want to pursue PhDs, like, you know, it's uh, obviously GPAs matters and, you know, well written and polished uh, SOP matters and everything matters. But the most and important thing is, I mean, you are, you are ready to go, right? Uh, you spend a more than five years in your life and the uh, payment will be low. 
Uh, but like you need to get you know handle with that. And the second thing is uh, important thing is that do you have any research topic that uh, awake you at night? And third uh, thing might be that okay the networking is right the least important thing, but sometimes it matters, right? So attending international conferences and networking and you know get to know the people that uh, who are working on that area, the papers that you are reading, the you know the authors of their papers are matters, and then. If you know that people, right, it makes your life different, right? So get to know with them through the professors would be a good potential strategy to make your life much easier to get into a PhD program. And conference is that place that you make it happen. Yes, come as as possible, but not saying like, you know, six times a year or something like that, but at least one or two times, uh, either domestic Korean conference would be fine, but uh, international conference would be more preferable. Okay, on top of that, I just want to highlight that uh, publication is not a requirement to get into a PhD program, so don't get me wrong. But a, the, uh, your experience with your uh, diverse faculty members, particularly like your supervisor, is super important. So like any, okay, I work in this area this fair amount of time, uh, and then, but okay, what I got is this, right? But at the end of the day, I have no result. It's totally fine, but your experience will be appear in the, your recommendation letter and your SOP matters. You are ready to you know pursue the further uh, academic careers. So without Professor Kim, mm -hmm. and no PhD. <laughs> Nobody knows what would have happened in the future or in the past, but at least right now, Professor Kim is probably one of the, literally the key reason why I ended up pursuing a PhD. So like we are constantly keep uh, a, a, you know, catching up with uh, a most up to literature to uh, give a back and forth about the, what is going on in the world and, and where we got uh, ideas, we want to you know, tweak our current research project and so on. So basically we are working on like uh, five Five to seven, I don't know, like a couple of a diverse a project, you know, at the same time. So I mean, there are tons of tons of things that we are constantly working on together, and hopefully we can continue to collaborate as a partner, not my students, but in the future as a research collaborator. Yeah, uh, first and foremost, I just want to say about, okay, I really appreciate your effort throughout the two and a half years of your that devotion and dedication to the collection of data and cleaning it and etc. And I also want to highlight that I wish your best luck in your uh, further a PhD life. So like, uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, in my case, I would thank uh, Professor Kim for encouraging me to pursue a PhD. Um, I, I don't think I would have actually done it without him. To pursue a PhD, you need support from multiple faculties. Of course, uh, Professor Kim was key to that. And for pushing me to go beyond my boundaries because as you mentioned I am risk adverse and at least for me this is a pretty big step uh, but without her support I don't think I would be willing or able to have gone this far so thank you very much for your time and investment into me.